Hey guys, Zom Fox here, and today we're going to be doing the tier list for all four of the United Football League's Week 1 games. Now, for those of you who don't know, this is a tier list that I started last year after the XFL's first season back, you know, the XFL 3.0, where I look at the 2022 USFL opening week games and the XFL games and put them into a tier list and then added on to it with the USFL 2023 season. As the opening week games for spring football are some of the most important games of the entire year, considering the fact that this is how a lot of people end up start watching spring football, and the better those games are, the more people are going to stay and keep watching and all that. So, we do this now every single time a new season starts, and so we are now doing the UFL with the four games that we saw in week one. Now, as a refresher what the tier list is for those of you who are either new here or, you know, it's been a while, the tier list has six tiers. It is a very basic tier list. The S tier are for those greatest of great games, the ones that stand above the rest, very much like the Generals versus Stallions season opener in 2022. Then, of course, A tier games are overall great ones, whether it be because they're just overall a close game from start to finish, they have a bunch of key highlight moments. Overall, these are just some of the best games out there. The Dragons versus Defenders this past year in 2023 is a great example of that. You had an iconic moment with the Lemons going on the field late in the game, as well as other things. Very good game. Then the B tier is four games that are just good. Above average, but not necessarily great games. These will be things that objectively aren't... Well, they're objectively good, but not great. Think very much like the Panthers versus Gamblers in 2023. It was a very good game, but you're probably not going to remember too much of it, but it was still a solid game. Then, of course, C tier is something like the Stars versus Breakers in 2022. A game that is overall pretty forgettable. Not that it's bad, it's just kind of average. It's not really boring, it was objectively a decent game, but there might not be anything to really remember it from. Then D tier games that are essentially F tier games, but have moments that save them. A great example is the Battlehawks versus Brahmas last year. For about 55 of the 60 minutes, the game was insanely boring, bland, and had nothing really of value. But the last few minutes, with the Battlehawks making that scorching comeback, elevated it from an F tier game to a D tier game. It saved it from being one of the worst opening week games. It still is one of, but not nearly as bad as the F tier. That would be a game like the 2022 Bandits vs. Maulers. You probably remember nothing of it. It was a blowout, but it wasn't a blowout where a team scored like 40 points. The Bandits were able to score 17 points and say that's good enough and win the game. Those are, of course, the worst games of the worst are F tier. Now, the first game to look at is going to be the Stallions vs. Renegades, the Battle of the Champions. This was a game that overall was pretty good. The first half was a lot better than the second half, mainly because of the fact that the first half had the intrigue of the Stallions running their 2QB system with Matt Corral and Adrian Martinez, who both really showed a... Adrian Martinez looked really good running the ball, but Matt Corral was pretty bad passing. But then right before halftime, the Stallions, instead of going a quick out to get a closer field goal like everybody expected, they instead decided to do a deep shot downfield, and Corral ended up throwing a beautiful pass to Deion Kane. To get a touchdown that ended up giving them a tie after they completed the two-point conversion heading into halftime. And then when the second half came out, the game basically ended mainly because of a Luis Perez interception later. But the fact is that even though the second half kind of got out of the way for the Renegades, even though they kind of kept it close for a bit, overall this was an A-tier game, I would say. This was a very solid game all in all. It wasn't anything spectacular by any means, which is why it's not an S-tier. It was a very solid game, though. The final score doesn't indicate how close this game was for most of it. The fact is this definitely is in line with a lot of the other A-tier games, especially because the first half was such a big deal as you had XFL and USFL diehard fans really rooting for their conference to get the W. And so when you had it go out of halftime tied 11-all, it was a great moment. And even though, like I said, the game kind of got out of the way for the Renegades in the second half, it was still a really good game and deserves the A-tier. And the next game is going to be the Battlehawks versus Panthers. This is a weird one to judge. Look, this is very much determined on what you like in football because for a defensive fan, the first half, half of it was great. The Panthers' offense for most of the first half was just terrible. It wasn't even like the Battlehawks' defense played good. It was just the Panthers' offense had no idea what they were doing. And it wasn't until like the end of the second quarter when they realized, hey, we have West Hills, let's use him. So for the entire first half, basically, it was Panthers' defense playing incredible against the Battlehawks' offense and then the Panthers' offense doing whatever the hell that was. But there were some great moments. Of course, you had the goal line stand by the Battlehawks getting an interception right when EJ Perry was about to get the Panthers their first touchdown of the game, which is a great moment. And then the second half, of course, the fourth quarter is when things really picked up. The fourth quarter was great. 
Overall, the fourth quarter just had incredible stuff. Essentially, the Battle Hawks were able to get a couple touchdowns, mainly courtesy of Marcel Aitman just going god mode and a terrible penalty by the Panthers. And of course, they ended up getting a lead over the Panthers, who had had EJ Perry run in a couple touchdowns. But with less than a minute left, EJ Perry was able to drive the Panthers down the field with a lot of help from West Hills to get Jake Bates in line for a 64-yard game-winning field goal, which he nailed twice, both before and after the timeout that was called, and it was a great ending. Look, I know some of you might say this is like the Battlehawks Brahms game from last year. I wouldn't say so, because the Battlehawks Brahms game last year quite literally was like three good minutes of an of a 60-minute game. This one was a lot better than that. Basically, the entire fourth quarter was really solid, and like I said, the first half, half of it was good and half of it was terrible. Whenever the Panthers' offense was on the field, aside from the one drive in the second quarter, was terrible. But whenever the Battlehawks' offense was out there, it was actually a great matchup between the Panthers' defense and the Battlehawks' offense. But this game was not as good as the Stallions' Renegades. This is a B-tier game. This is a game that you will have moments you remember. The field goal being, of course, the big one. You're going to remember it. But as an overall game, it wasn't necessarily great. It was just kind of good. Again, the third quarter, you can pretty much just erase that from your memory and you're not really missing anything. Same with the first quarter. You basically have the one drive in the second quarter where the Panthers are going downfield and then get intercepted. And then you have the fourth quarter that has all the crazy stuff. So it's a lot better than the Battle Hawks Brahmas game from last year, but it's not as good as the Stallions Renegades B tier. The next one is going to be the Defenders versus Brahmas. This is um this is a tough one for me because look, this game was really wild. The final score does not indicate how close this game was. This game legitimately was a tight contest. Number one, of course, you had the incredible Brad Wing and Alex Millette play at the half, where they, instead of kicking a long field goal with destroying, they decided to do a makeshift pass play. Brad Wing threw his third read, which was the center Alex Millette playing tight end, who ended up getting some yak to get it in for a touchdown for like a 40-yard TD reception. There was a huge play that gave the Brahmas points that nobody expected them to have. And of course, you had Gene DeLance pulling an MVP performance out for the Brahmas by getting two TDs called back for the defenders from awful penalties, including spitting on somebody and getting ejected. So the defender's score was a lot closer than what it says, and the interception that happened was because he got hurt and got like rushed right back onto the field. The fact is, this was a really good game. When you watch this, you clearly saw this as the best game of the weekend, above all else. Because you had those key moments. You had that Brad Wing pass. You had Alex or you had Gene DeLance getting ejected. You had the super challenge working from Wade Phillips. The amount of things that you're going to remember from this game is insanely good. But the only caveat I have to this one on the tier list is where does it go? It was better than the Stallions Renegades, but it wasn't as good as General Stallions in 22. The fact is the ending, the very ending, was bad because there it just wasn't close at that point. But I'm going to say that overall, when over 55 minutes of game time was great, was truly a great game, I think this game does deserve to be an S tier. If I were to rewatch any game, not General Stallions, that's in the A tier or above, I'd pick the Defenders versus Brahmas. That game was a really, really good game. And I think when you look at it in that way, is it better than Gamblers Panthers in 22? Yes. Is it better than Dragons Defenders in 23? Yes. Is it better than the Star Showboats? Yes. Is it better than the Maulers Breakers? Yes. And if I already said it's better than the Stallions Renegades, I kind of have to give it S by proxy, so I'm giving it the S tier. Then the last game is going to be the Showboats versus Roughnecks. This is a weird one. The final score would make you think this is going to be in the A tier, but yeah, if you watch this, no, it's not. Look, your only real highlight was the Vinny Papale catch, which was incredible toe tap. But when you get outside of that, what was actually good in this game? Like, really, what was good? Ruben Foster had a great performance. Toby Johnson was great for the Roughnecks. But the Roughnecks offense was horrid to watch. This Showboat's offense is still getting, you know, gelled together. Their O-line didn't play as good as we expected. Their running game was non-existent. It was just mid. Like, the you, only crazy part was, like, you had the back-to-back -back fumbles in near the end of the game where the Roughnecks are driving, then they fumble the ball, and then literally the next play, the Showboats fumble it right back, which allowed the Roughnecks to get back into the game. But the final score is going to indicate this was a close game. It really wasn't. The Showboats had the lead for almost the entire thing. It never felt close. It took a wild sequence of fumbles for the Roughnecks to get quote-unquote in the game. Overall, this was a C-tier game, I would say. 
Look, it just, it was mid, right? I mean, would I watch this over the Gamblers Panthers? No. Would I watch this over the Battle Hawks Panthers? No. And I even tweeted this out live, by the way, I'm on exit for those you don't know, same handles I am on here. But I tweeted out during the game, this was clearly the worst game of the weekend. It wasn't bad, right? This is not Guardians Roughnecks. This is not Bandits Maulers. But it was the worst by far. So it has to go to C tier. It just wasn't that good a game. And so I'm going to put it at C tier. And so that'll do it. This has been Zon Fox. If you enjoyed this content, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell. Let me know what, down below what you guys think about this listing. In terms of the opening week, I would say it definitely competes with the 2023 opening weekend. I think a lot of people have a lot of nostalgia for 22, but I think, as I talked about before, 23's weekend was probably the best weekend of all of them so far, considering the fact that, you know, its worst game was a B-tier game. But I'd say that it definitely matches up pretty well to it. I think it has the best game overall, but I would say that games like the Maulers Breakers arguably are better than the Stallions Renegades. It's very close between 23 USFL and 24 UFL, which opening weekend was the best. But again, they had an S-tier game in the Defenders Brahmas, so that's a good thing. And so, like I said before, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell. We're getting very close to 700 subscribers, which would be crazy to hit. I believe we're like four away at the time of recording this video. If you want to become a channel member, there's a link down below, or you can just click the join button to become a member for as little as a dollar a month. And you get an exclusive video every month as well as many other channel perks. And as always, make sure to have a great night.